what is good what is up it's jordan or texans thoughts and thank the lord man it finally happened oh my god i thought we would never see the day but cal mcnair you you beautiful son of a bitch you did it you fired bill o'brien finally uh just hearing the news honestly today it made me so damn happy i think it was just as happy as when we damn drafted deshaun honestly these two days probably the happiest days in the bill o'brien era and and you know that's pathetic but now we enter a new era and that's what we're going to talk about today we are going to see who you know could potentially replace bill o'brien maybe it's eric bien the offensive coordinator of the chiefs i'm going to react to the highlights of the chiefs patriots game from tonight give you all my thoughts on bill o'brien the franchise and what our new look offense maybe could look like so if you enjoy, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on Bill O'Brien finally getting canned. Let's get into it. So let's start it off by talking about the firing of Bill O'Brien, and this was a long move coming, honestly. He's deserved to be fired at different points in his tenure. Honestly, you could say he should have been fired after the Colts loss, playoff loss in 2018. He should have definitely been lost after the collapse to the Chiefs in 2019 in that playoffs. That's when he should have been fired. Now, finally, Cal pulls the trigger. Thank God. Thank God I never have to hear another press conference of him ever again, because I don't want to hear that he just got to coach better. That's it. That's that's he just got to coach better. I never want to hear that again. That's so fucking annoying to me. But thank God we got rid of him. All of his awful decision making as a coach, also as a GM, he has hurt this roster big time. But we're moving past that. We're into a new era where it's the Deshaun Watson era. And I know that's what it was before, but now it truly is. It can be built around him because he doesn't have a coach and a GM who's hurting him anymore, who's making his life harder. And that's what Bill O'Brien was doing. He was not making his job easier and elevating his talent like a good coach and GM is supposed to do. He was making Deshaun's life harder and wasting his talents and wasting his career. But we're past that. Thank God. And we got to think about, you know, who's going to come in and who's going to right the ship, who's going to change this, the course of this team. And we know nothing's going to happen mid-season. Romeo Cornell is going to take over and, you know, I think he's going to do a fine job. I think the players are going to kind of rally underneath him because we could tell, we could tell if you watch the games, we could tell that the team didn't want to play for Bill O'Brien anymore. You know, they really didn't. They were not leaving it all out there on the field. And with Rack, I think we're going to see better effort throughout the rest of the season. I'm excited now. Again, we have a little bit more hope for this season. Thank God we have something to look forward to. Now, like I said, who is going to come in here and replace Bill O'Brien? You know, it's a very low bar, but we got to think about possible replacements. And here's going to be my list. So I'm going to start kind of with offensive minded guys first. And first guy, you know, everyone wants is Eric Bieniemy, And there's very good reasons for that. And we're watching the reasons right here. I guess not on this play, but we're watching the offense. We're going to show you. I'm going to break down some plays that we're going to see here and, and show you all why Bieniemy is such an awesome hire for this team. And just to go into it briefly, like, he is the engineer apart along with Andy Reid, obviously. He learned from Andy Reid and is the engineer of these top offenses that the Chiefs had. And he's elevated the young talent of Patrick Mahomes, who was raw as a quarterback coming out of college. He was raw. He had tons of potential, but he was raw and needed work. And he helped him put him in advantageous positions to succeed. To succeed. That's nothing Bill O'Brien has done. Look at this. I got to stop myself for a second, but just, just the basic swing pass out of the backfield. Have we seen that ever in the Bill O'Brien era? Duke Johnson, David Johnson, finally on the team, we got receiving options, not just Alpha Blue anymore. We've still never seen that. Look at all the space the running back has to work. And Eli is a beast, but just he, there was no one near him. This is about scheming easy throws, motion out of the backfield, easy throw over the middle field. Deshaun eats over the middle of the field. That's what Biennemi has been able to create for Mahomes. Um, this game, the Patriots honestly played super good defense. When I watched it live, they were just playing really good. So even though it might not look like the best Chiefs offense yet, like we we know, we know firsthand how dangerous this Chiefs offense can be. Um, and it's definitely going to elevate Deshaun's game. Now, the next guy I'm really interested in looking at is another offensive guy is Brian Dabble. And you might not know the name. He hasn't really gotten a lot of praise, but he is the Bills offensive coordinator. And if you want to talk about improving a young quarterback who needs help, look at Josh Allen. Look at Josh Allen's jump from last season to this season. And Dabble has gotten a lot of the praise for that. He's changed up the scheme to fit Allen's strengths. They've helped with his mechanics and decision-making and stuff like that. And he has become such a better quarterback and their offense is insane. And I'll do film breakdowns on all these coaching prospects, but just know that Brian Dabble is a name to remember. 
Um, moving on, I also really like Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley, the head coach of Oklahoma, he's been touted as an offensive genius. And the thing that I love about Riley so much is that he's shown an ability to adapt his scheme to the personnel that he's given to work with, right? Because whoever the head coach is like that we're going to get, they're not going to have power over personnel decisions, not like Bill O'Brien is able to. So he, they've got to learn to work with what they've got. They can't be thrust in a square peg into a round hole like Bill O'Brien has for his entire tenure. They can't do that. And Lincoln Riley has shown with the college talent that he has that he's able to do that. He had quote unquote mobile quarterbacks, you know, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts. And, you know, people are going to call them mobile quarterbacks and, oh, that's who that's who Lincoln Riley works with best. But they're all very different mobile quarterbacks and they win in very different ways. And so he's shown an ability to adapt his scheme to those strengths. And that's what he can do with Deshaun Watson as well, putting him in the position to, to succeed. And so while I'm a little bit more cautious about Lincoln Riley, because number one, I don't know if he wants to make the jump to the NFL. Number two, I don't know if he's ready for the jump to the NFL. The college to the NFL is a big, big difference. And I don't know if he's ready for that for the full command of a team as a head coach role. Ideally, in a perfect world, he could just come on as an OC. We get a different head coach and he just purely has to focus on the offense. And I would be very, very confident in his ability for that. But we don't know what's going to happen there. So those are kind of my three guys on the offensive side of the ball. Now, moving on to the defensive side of the ball. I really, really like Robert Sala. Maybe that's just Sala, Sala, I don't know but the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers, all the players, all the coaching ch coaching staff, they love him. They love the energy that he brings, the fire. You'll see so many clips of him getting hyped up. And I like that, the fire and passion that he brings, but he's also good from an X's and O's standpoint, you know, being able to adjust his personnel on defense to what the offense is attacking them with. And he's led a very talented 49ers defense to, to play really well. And obviously we're gonna need more talent on the defensive side of the Texans. I think that'll be a big, big point of emphasis over the off season. And I think if we get a defensive minded head coach that can just focus on the defense and then hire an offensive coordinator and just let them do their work. You know, I'm so scarred from Bill O'Brien of being this offensive dude and he wants to be the head coach, but he also wants to have influence on the play calling. I don't, I don't want that. I don't know. I'm just, I, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't know. I, it needs to be the right person, but like, I'm just scarred by it. <laughs> can, can you blame me? I mean, like, ugh. so maybe, so that's why part of me really wants to go with a defensive guy, but we'll see how that goes. Um, the next defensive dude who I would want to look at is Wink Martindale, and he's the defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens, and he's just one of the most underrated and underappreciated coaches in the NFL, I think. I think he's done such a good job with the Ravens defenses over the years, just having them playing hard, disciplined, tough football. And he knows X's and O's. He knows how to create blitzes and mismatches. We've seen it. Ravens blitzes are, oh my God. I'm just excited for, I'm honestly just excited for change. Just anyone. The enemy, Riley, Dabble. I'm sure there's some other guys. Arthur Smith is another dude. I like the offensive coordinator from the Titans. He's made life really easy on Tannehill. I like, I believe his name is Mike LaFleur. He's the 49ers passing game coordinator and he's made life easy on all their quarterbacks garoppolo uh nick mullins they, he always gets them to play well and make easy throws let's see here just attacking over the middle of the field that area behind the linebackers and just in front of the safeties that's an area of the field that bo brian never seems to attack the enemy attacking it right here and you know he's going to want to get Travis Kelsey involved. I think if we do go down the enemy path, Jordan Akins is going to be extremely, extremely vital for this team because he's that athletic mismatch tight end. The thing is, and I even said this on my film breakdown on Jordan Akins, is he needs to run a little bit crisper routes. That's why Travis Kelsey is so, so damn good because he runs the best routes I've ever seen out of a tight end. Like, it's insane. Whew. Glad Edwards E-Layer is nasty too. They just got so much talent on the offense and... And we're not maybe as talented as the... Oh, what is this play? He's going to score? Ah, let's go. All right, let's see this play. What is going on here? Okay, so they got a bunch of formation to the left. They're going to motion one dude over. Defense doesn't really respond. Okay, Gilmore's following him over, actually. So he's going to go out right. And then Mahomes is going to run out left. And it looks like they're faking the pitch to the running back here. But then you've also got Tyreek Hill following 11 on that motion. So they got like a dummy motion and then they got the legit motion with Hill. And you've also got 70 left guard. He's going to be pulling. So that's kind of your indicator that the play is actually going to the right. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, so little toss, a little discreet toss. Defense doesn't see it. Look at these guys. Look at them. He's like, oh, shit. Now I got to get over there. Let's watch one more time because it's kind of hard to see. But you're going to see defense shifts to the left first to follow the motion. Then it goes back right to follow the other motion. And then there's just too many steps behind. And that's all it takes. When you got this type of speed, these types of weapons, Tyreek Hill, like you can put Will Fuller in that role. You can put Brandon Cooks in that role. Maybe he's not as, as fast as Tyreek Hill, but he's pretty damn close. And when you're that fast, all it takes is that split second hesitation. And that's what BNM is so good at creating. That's how he killed us in the playoff game. All this motion, all this misdirection, all that creativity to get the defense off guard, to get them thinking too much instead of just reacting and going with the motions of it. When you're thinking too much, it's very, very hard to play fast at that full speed. And that's what I love about this offense. Their red zone play calling is something to watch because I think it's very, very good. I like this little toss. We've never seen tosses. This is a great toss to get your pullers out in front, get your running back in space and attack the edges. Oh my God, we're never going to see just 72 runs up the middle in between the dang A gaps again. We're not going to see that. That ain't going to be the case. Oh, okay. Let's see this. So we're going to get, so this looks like, ooh, so this kind of looks like the, the touchdown we saw before where you got that first motion over. You, it's like, remember before we had that dummy motion? They had the dummy motion where the first guy comes over and then the second guy comes over. This time it's the first guy and he just gets it this time. And so that's what makes it so hard to defend this offense because they make everything look the same, but it's very different. And you have to respect every threat. You have to respect Hardman on the initial jet sweep. If a second guy comes, you have to respect that too. If the running back goes outside on a potential toss, you have to respect that too. And so they just throw so many different things at you to put you in a conflict of assignment. And that's what great, great offenses do. That's never what Bill O'Brien did. He had no idea how to do that. But the enemy is showing that he can do that. And I'm so excited to actually fully like look down and break down several games of the enemy's offense because this is just one game and it is one game against an elite defense. And we're already seeing such good flashes, such good promise, but I will have full film breakdowns out on all those coaching candidates that I mentioned and more. And then I'll probably make a video or two talking about GM candidates, but I'm gonna leave that a little bit further down the road unless y'all really want it. Let me know in the comments if you really want a GM video similar to this one. Um, where I just give quick initial thoughts. But later I'll probably have a full one doing a lot more research on them. Just because to be honest with you, I don't I don't fully know about all the GM candidates out there right now. That's not really what I focus on, but I will for you guys and I'll figure that out. All right, that's gonna do it for the video. Hope y'all enjoyed and hope y'all drink and celebrate that Bill O'Brien is finally gone. Finally. And if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Shout out to all the Texans Thoughts team members. Appreciate y'all big time. If you want to join the team, hit the join button below the video for some big time perks. And if you want more Texans content, make sure to check out Texans Unfiltered. We've got a podcast, website, and YouTube channel bringing y'all more content. All right, take care everyone and bye-bye, Billy O'Brien.